I've always had this fear of elevators. I'm not claustrophobic. It's not the small space that scares me. My fear is simply being locked in by something beyond my control. I live on the fifth floor of an apartment building, and believe me when I say that my phobia has a daily impact on my life. Going up and down those stairs is tiring, and my friend caught the bad end of that last week. I had slept in again, something I do all too often. I heard a ringing, beginning in my dream, and as I opened my eyes and drifted back to reality, I realized the sound was coming from my phone. It was Maria. As I answered the phone with weak hands, I tried to mumble a hello, but nothing came out. Hey, I'm in town if you want to meet me. I did want to, but I did not have the energy to go down 105 steps. Yes, I have counted. When you walk them every day, you count them at least one time. My silence spoke for me, as she replied. Please don't tell me you're sleeping at 2 p.m. again. Slightly unfair assessment. It was 1.45 p.m. I found my voice again. Hey, sorry, yeah, I kind of was. Can we meet later? I can't be bothered for the stairs right now. I'm literally finished in town and was about to head home. It's now or never. Please. I couldn't say no to her when she says it like that. She has a specific tone of saying please that she just knows always works on me. I still had that sense of nothing quite feeling real, so I sat up and tried to wake myself a little. Fine, fine, where are you? Downstairs. I chatted on the phone for a few minutes whilst I got ready. We hadn't seen each other for a few weeks, with both of us being busy with university work, so I was actually quite excited. Once ready, I stepped out into the hallway and began my usual routine, making my way to the stairs. Steel, I passed the elevators. I do this so often, I don't even think about how much time and energy they could save me. Yet this time, something strange happened. The familiar rumbling of the elevator echoed through the walls as it arrived at my floor. The door opened, spilling the artificial light into the depressingly dim hallway. The gentle, ominous sound of the elevator speaker allowed grainy music to enter an otherwise quiet atmosphere. I could almost make out the song. Almost. I don't know if it was my tiredness or having my friend right at the bottom but I felt like it was time to face my phobia head on. I think I might try the elevator. Wait, really? Oh my God, I'm so proud of you. I'll be right here at the bottom waiting for you. I stepped into the metal box, doubting myself with every step. Even as my hand reached for G, confirming my destination for the ground floor, I was fighting myself to not run right back out. The doors seemed to close slower than they opened, giving me ample time to change my decision. I stayed. With the doors sealed, so was my fate. I knew I could no longer turn back. Just a warning. The signal might cut out if... Maria. Hello. The call had ended. I had forgotten that elevators often do that. Not only do they wish to trap you from the outside world physically, but also mentally. I had no way of communicating with Maria and was left with my own thoughts, all of which were negative. I tried to fight the feeling of dread, trying to not even acknowledge the fact that I was in an elevator. It must have been about a minute in that I realized something was wrong. Elevators were not supposed to take this long. The number above the door indicated that I was still on the fourth floor, but I could feel the elevator moving. or. Was that just my anxiety making everything spin? I pressed G again. I don't know how many times I pressed it before switching to the open doors button. Neither seemed to do anything to help my shaky breathing from speeding up. It felt as though the air I was breathing was giving me no oxygen at all, suffocating on nothing. I pressed the emergency button, waiting for a response. For a brief moment... As a man's voice interrupted the music, I felt myself feel more grounded with the earth. Hello. 
Is everything okay? Despite my panic subsiding, I spoke too fast for him to understand me. What? I tried again. I think the elevator is broken. It's not moving. A few seconds passed, a few seconds longer than I'd like before someone responds to something like that. But I kept taking deep breaths, knowing that he was probably sending somebody out to fix it. The next sound from the speaker broke me. It's too late. The music came back to life, unaware of the terror within me. A cheery, happy melody failing to make me feel anything similar. I pressed every button I could. I tried to call, text and video chat with Maria. Every action I took felt slow, although I'm sure all of this happened within the span of ten seconds. At the end of it, I collapsed to the metal ground. I looked up at the number. Three. We had gone down a floor. That was good, I thought, until I felt everything stop. I didn't even realize it was moving until it had stopped. The change in velocity was noticeable. I would have felt relieved if it weren't for the fact that the third floor of this building doesn't exist. At least if it does, then I'm not sure how to access it. The elevator has no three button and there are no doors to exit the stairwell on the third floor. Even on the exterior of the building, there is a tall blank space on the wall between the windows of the second and fourth floors. The doors opened, though they did not free me. They only made my prison larger. Darkness seemed to spill in from the large, empty room that the elevator had landed on. I stood up, noticing the damp, dusty feeling of the air. I couldn't see the walls of the room, but I could make out the outline of someone at the edge of the darkness. Right where the light met the dark, something was there. I only noticed that the music had stopped when the man on the elevator's helpline spoke again. I could make out his words between the static and crackles. Perhaps some fears are rational. The longer I stared at the silhouette, the more I seemed to see... It wasn't motionless. It seemed to move slightly up and down. I would say it was breathing if the pattern was more regular. This was more like a grotesque quaking. A dripping sound began as a puddle of liquid emerged from the darkness. Perhaps some fears are... The power went out, and as the lights flickered away, the gentle crackle of the speakers vanished. I could hear only my breathing and the dripping. I did not know whether this thing was in front of me or far away from me. I listened as carefully as I could, listening for any kind of footsteps, but the dripping was so irregular that it was impossible to ignore it and let it blend into the background. The darkness seemed thick, like I could cut right through it. If I had a knife on me, I would probably have tried, at least I would be protecting myself in the process. I didn't know what to expect. Every small movement I made felt like it could be my last. I heard a whirring and the doors close. I had never felt so relieved to be locked in by something beyond my control. The elevator descended again and I had a moment to reflect on what had just happened. The lights of the elevator remained off, but the red glow from the display above the door remained. I watched as the numbers blinked from 2 to 1 to G. I was waiting for the doors to open and to be met with the familiar beaming face of Maria. As light from the lobby poured into the elevator, I saw that the lobby was empty, and as my phone reconnected to the network... It got multiple notifications at once. You're taking a while. Is everything okay? Hello? Is everything okay? I'm going to come upstairs and find you. My hands still shaking. Tried their best to type out a reply. Don't take the elevator. As the message failed to send, my dread was all but confirmed. I ran out of the still pitch black elevator, through the lobby, and sprinted up the stairs. Maria! I called out to her up the stairwell, although even if she called back, 
I probably wouldn't have heard her over my panic. Maria! I kept calling out until I reached the third floor. The blank wall of this floor meant something new to me. Once simply a wall with no door was now a barrier, keeping something at bay. Slowly, but as fast as my anxiety would allow, I placed a finger on the wall, then my palm, then my ear. I gently tapped on the wall, and it seemed to echo louder than a normal wall should. I stayed as silent as possible, not even entirely sure what I was listening for. My own heartbeat seemed to grow louder and louder, thumping right through my entire body. My own fingertips moved slightly with every beat as I stayed silent, waiting, like the creature on the other side, waiting. I almost fell backwards as a loud bang echoed. Turning around, I saw that it came from behind me. It was Maria. Oh my God, you look so stressed. It's okay if you couldn't take the elevator in the end. I did take it. I wish I didn't. I briefly explained what I saw. Trying to make it sound like reality was difficult. It felt like I was lying to her when I was simply explaining the very events I had just witnessed. I think she would have laughed if I didn't have tears streaming down my face. She hugged me tightly as I let my head sink into her shoulder. Muffled through my crying, I was able to get out. I thought you were dead. I stayed at Maria's house that night and the whole week. To my surprise, she seemed to believe everything I had told her. She wanted to help me find the truth. She always has been a good friend. I'm truly honored to have someone like her in my life. The first thing we found was an image of the building's exterior from 2008. Windows on the third floor, some open, some closed, many with plants visible or clothes hanging out to dry. People lived there some time ago. The next image we could find was from 2015. The windows were gone. In those seven years, something happened. The question is simply a matter of what. A local news article from 2012 seemed to hold some answers. Fifteen residents left furious as they are evicted from their homes. It spoke about the apartment building and how a leak on the third floor kept coming back. Residents described it as a deep, black, gooey liquid, dripping with an inconsistent rhythm, an awful lot like what I had seen. The eviction was temporary at first, whilst the leak was investigated, but it seemed to slowly transition to something permanent. What piqued my interest is that they specified we were able to catch up with 14 of those affected. So where's the missing one? After reading through the names of everyone they caught up with and investigating public documents, I found only one resident's name that didn't appear in the article. Dr. Victor Moros. He was reported missing shortly after the article was published. He had a PhD in psychology, specifically specializing in phobias. I managed to track down a relative of Victor. Their most recent address is the small English countryside town of Sonda. I want to talk to them, but I don't want to be disrespectful. They'll just think I'm crazy. I did visit the apartment lobby yesterday just to check in on everything. The elevators were out of order. Not that I needed a sign to stop me from using them again anyway. All of this seems to link together somehow. I just know it.